Good evening. I'm Leanne Girari. Welcome to Business PNG, your weekly look at business news and updates. Direct selling is a dynamic, rapidly expanding channel of distribution for the marketing of products and services directly to consumers away from a fixed retail location. Papua New Guinea has been invaded with such a lucrative source of income that it isn't going away anytime soon. The flexibility of multi-level marketing, as well as the removal of the middleman, has led to its growing popularity, especially among stay-at-home moms. These days, more and more people in Papua New Guinea are finding that they aren't limited to a single source of income. With the various money-making opportunities available, many people are finding that they can earn a few extra kinas a month by thinking a little outside the box. It's a grand idea, earning extra income or quitting your full-time jobs altogether and working from home. There are plenty of authentic and reliable ways to make money by working from home. The secret is knowing how to separate the scams from the real jobs. Direct selling is a dynamic, rapidly expanding channel of distribution for the marketing of products and services directly to consumers, away from a fixed retail location. Direct selling provides important benefits to individuals who desire an opportunity to earn an income and build a business of their own. To consumers who enjoy an alternative to shopping centers, department stores or the like, and to the consumer products market. It offers an alternative to traditional employment for those who desire a flexible income earning opportunity to supplement their household income, or whose responsibilities or circumstances do not allow for regular part-time or full-time employment. In many cases, direct selling opportunities develop into a fulfilling career for those who achieve success and choose to pursue their independent direct selling business on a full-time basis. One of the most popular questions related to flexible and part-time work options is, can I really earn a living working in direct sales? It's a reasonable question, since these days one can sell everything from gourmet food to financial products in this $100 billion a year industry. The advantages of direct selling include the fact that anyone can enter the field. One can set their own hours, taking time off to travel, or visit the family without answering to anyone. In direct sales, independent representatives, also known as independent distributors, sales representatives or consultants, market their products in a variety of ways, including one-on-ones, home parties, and the internet. Most direct sales firms are multi-level marketing companies, or MLMs. When you work for a multi-level marketing company, you are compensated for your own product sales as well as the sales of your recruits and recruits' recruits. Legitimate MLMs charge a relatively small fee for their starter kits, sell products that are purchased by the ultimate user, and normally offer reps refund for unsold items. MLMs are sometimes erroneously referred to as pyramid schemes, companies structured with the intent of defrauding the public. Pyramid schemes are illegal and the vast majority of their participants lose money. They rely on recruiting new representatives to profit in lieu of product sales, charge reps large upfront fees and convince them to buy large amounts of inventory that is not returnable. Their products generally have little or no actual value. Today, PNG is not short in the number of multi-level marketing companies springing up around the country. Stay-at-home moms are the biggest clients of this selling method due to its flexibility. The task, however, is spotting and differentiating legitimate firms from the phonies. One such example of a company that's been in Papua New Guinea for a number of years and continues to grow is Proma Systems, one of Australia's largest privately owned direct sales companies within the Australian direct sales industry. The philosophy of the company is we believe in people and their dreams and their ability to achieve those dreams. And that philosophy of the company has been in existence from day one when the company was founded in May of 1983. And to this date, you know, we still live by that philosophy of the company. So you could see that throughout the company, Proma Systems has touched lives, you know, from the grassroots level, you know, from, you know, the mothers to working class people, you know, that Proma has touched lives, you know. So um, the distributor network is basically, I would say that 80% it's women driven. Women run the business basically and we are part of the direct selling industry 
and with the direct selling industry, it protects the rights of every distributor in the um, market. Founded in 1983 in Australia, Proma Systems was established in Papua New Guinea in 1995 and has proved to be a promising business opportunity for people throughout the country, selling Grace Cosmetics, Grace Designer Jewelry, as well as Proma Optimum Health and Proma Performance products. Proma Systems has been in existence uh, for 31 years. Mm -hmm. And um, in Papua New Guinea, we celebrate our 20th anniversary this year. So we have this biggest um, conference. We're working towards that. It's going to happen in November. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be held at the Crown Plaza in Port Mosby. Mm -hmm. And um, we're expecting over 300 delegates from around the country. Ms. The owner of the company, Mr. Fitler and his wife, together with our international sales manager, uh, Brian Cameron Smith, they will be over here for the conference. So it's gonna be a big one because that's our 20th mm -hmm. um, birthday celebration. Okay. Right. More when we come back, stay with us. Heather Yanina, a mother and grandmother, joined Proma a decade ago and through her loyalty to the company has reached the level of executive goal director, a first for Papua New Guinea. I joined Proma 18 years ago. And I simply take ownership over this thing to see how it works. And by doing that, through the training and motivation, personal development, everything that company train us, it helped me to achieve this highest position in the world. And I am the, I was the second one to achieve this position in the world. <clears throat> Seven years later, Violet Duma achieved that position also. So there's two Papua New Guinean and two Australian only. The rest of the world is still trying to get our position. So this is called Executive Director. And this is the highest position in the world. After years of being a stay-at-home mom, selling ice block at the Waigani market, Heather heard about the opportunity of direct selling and decided to give it a go, as she says an opportunity came knocking. Actually, um, before joining that, I used to be an ice block seller at the Waigani market. You see, I like to do things all the time. I don't believe in sitting around and waiting for my husband's pay packet, no. I don't want it. So because of this uh, type of, I don't know, character that I have, I like to work and make money for myself. Proma prides themselves in their reputation for offering genuine business opportunities to people from all walks of life, rewarding their hard work. Just touch people's life to give them, you know, to have that belief in themselves and, and all that, because we find that with our people, they don't believe in themselves enough. You know, they have a very low self-esteem. And, you know, our business really believe in personal development. Yeah, so that's what it's all about. So apart from product training, you know, from teaching the distributors about product knowledge, we also do a lot of personal development and also offering that business opportunity to people from all walks of life. Mm -hmm. And when you, you know, get to see people beginning to achieve their dreams and mm -hmm. realizing what they need to, to achieve that, if it wasn't for Proma, mm -hmm. they wouldn't be you know, enjoying you know, the life that they think mm -hmm. you know, it's not there for them. Titus Kambiu, a surveyor by profession, is another of Proma's success stories. Approached by a friend in 1996, two years after Promo was established in the country, Titus joined with the hopes of making some extra money. Initially treating Promo as a mere pastime, Titus started selling and specializing in Promo's performance products for land and sea machinery and transport. It wasn't until he started benefiting from his sales and being rewarded for his efforts that he quit his day job. I find Promo to be, I mean, at the first place, I thought it was just a hobby. Eh? I thought just joining for fun or something, but as, as I got along with the company, going to trainings and attending most of the meetings, conferences in Australia, I began to notice that, uh, you know, Proma is a real business in, it, in itself, so I decided to you know, stick to it until when I uh, finished work in 2005, I 
I begin to do it full time. Another such direct selling company making waves in the country is ProLink International. Established in PNG with the aim of improving people's lives by formulating, sourcing, manufacturing and distributing health and beauty products. ProLink International is uh, a wellness, uh, how should I say this, a wellness uh, uh, company mainly tackles anything regarding health. Okay, so ProLink uh, has three subsidiaries wherein we have the wellness shop where uh, we sell the products, the health products, fitness gadgets, medical devices, and the wellness institute where who are responsible for health seminars and teachings and also to uh, orient, reorient and train members and distributors of ProLink International. And the third would be the wellness center, which is actually a clinic, mainly physiotherapy clinic, which uh, provides uh, physical therapy services and also wellness services wherein, you know, cleansing of the blood through the use of detoxification. ProLink International operates through a network of members and distributors throughout Papua New Guinea to service the needs of its customers. We have right now 1,350 members and distributors who distributes the products. Okay, they sell the products in uh, villages, provinces, provinces, or any uh, town outside uh, Port Moresby. But we are mainly based in Port Moresby. For members, okay, for members, upon sign up, we give them uh, a minimum of 250 worth of free products, and their succeeding purchases would be on a 20% discount. Okay, from the retail price. But then again, if you're in the province, you can independently place your markup. We do not actually interfere with their markup unless it is, you know, uh, unreasonable. While direct selling has been around for a while and holds many opportunities to gain a sustainable income, it does require enduring effort. While there is no formula for determining how many hours one must commit to generate a substantial income, to earn the equivalent of a full-time salary, one has to work full-time, even then one must allow time to build a customer base. You're watching Business PNG. After the break, we discover the upcoming trends in the global business world in the new segment, Game Changers. Stay with us. Welcome back. In times of great economic prosperity, the very foundations of life and business undergo changes that transform industries and companies. The emergence of earth-shattering business trends redefines the way business is conducted and profits are realized. These are game changers. The track record of Crowdcube, one of the UK's biggest crowdfunding platforms, provides a compelling case for crowdsourced investment. But what exactly is crowdsourcing? And why is it being considered a game changer? Crowdsourcing is the process of obtaining needed services, ideas, or content by soliciting contributions from a large group of people, and especially from an online community, rather than from traditional employees or suppliers. The process is often used to split tedious work or to fundraise startup companies and charities, and can also occur offline. Success stories include Clearwater Revival, which developed a unique filtration technology using natural biological processes rather than chemicals to clean swimming pool water, and raised over £185,000 through Crowdcube to bring its technology to a market estimated to be worth $3.55 billion annually. With so many good businesses not getting what they need because the pendulum has swung too far the other way in terms of risk appetite, Instead of relying on banks, they have other options, including peer-to-peer -peer lending platforms and crowdfunding. For some startups, crowdfunding has provided crucial capital to getting them to the next stage of growth. Crowdfunding is exactly as it sounds. You are literally sourcing funds from a crowd. Rather than one sole investor or a handful of investors, you could potentially gain investment from hundreds of different people who wish to support your growing business, and invest a small amount to help you succeed. Few would dispute that crowdfunding can be a smart way of tapping into a personal network of contacts through an online pitch via a crowdfunding platform. You could end up with hundreds of shareholders who provide the money you need, but offer no additional value to your business and helping you succeed. 
The model has fundamentally changed the way that entrepreneurs fund their businesses. Goncalo de Vasconcelos, CEO of equity crowdfunding platform Syndicate Room, describes it as nothing short of revolutionary, both for investors and for startup companies. He says crowdfunding investors have come to play a crucial role in supporting the UK's SME sector by supplying an alternative and affordable source of finance to businesses. Even though the banks are now starting to lend to small businesses again, the supply of conventional finance is still a fraction of what it was. So crowdfunding is here to stay, going from strength to strength globally. Who knows, Papua New Guinea could very soon be tapping into the game-changing method of crowdsourcing. The idea is immense. Where a two-dimensional printer prints ink on flat surface paper, a 3D printer prints solid 3D objects. 3D printers print a diverse array of materials depending on the individual printer. Metal, nylon, string, and epoxy resins are some of the materials used by 3D printers, which has caused spectacular and never-before possibilities to evolve rapidly. Indeed, the ramifications brought on by 3D printers will ultimately affect intellectual property law, science, and the face of consumerism, among other societal factors. Houses, clothes, and even customized spare parts for machines used by the likes of NASA are amongst the more formative uses of 3D printers. This gives a hint of the length of time they've been around. They've been around for decades, used profusely in manufacturing machine shops. Custom crowns are regularly printed in dental labs from x-rays in under an hour, while the 737 Dreamliner is known to have at least 32 different 3D printed parts. Mainstream access to 3D printing is being sturdily egged on by 3D printing companies and competitive low prices, with some printers just up for over $400. 3D printers have quietly been soldiering on with their exclusive services. Their recent accessibility to the wider audience is already brewing major change in marketing, creative mindsets, and production. Accessories like iPhone or Samsung phone covers, kitchen tools, toys, earrings, along with personal inventions, are steadily being made possible to create out of the average basement, with businesses taking the market with simplification tactics, such as taking in designs and printing for customers. If you're able to have the idea or have, you know, the blueprint of what you want, you can actually get it made. So there's no limits with 3D printing. My name is Joshua Okubaya and I'm the co-founder of High Spirit. And this is my brother. John Okubaya and I'm also founder of High Spirit Bags. So High Spirit basically is a backpack company. We make fashionable backpacks that are also theft proof. Um, our backpacks are theft-proof because you can't get into them from the front side of the bag. The only way of getting into them is through the back. So when the bag's on your back, um, your stuff is completely protected. The technology that we believe that is going to emerge in the next 30 years is 3D printing because it's going to take impulse buying to another level. It's going to, now we're living in the age of clicking on something and ordering it. How about if we click on something and have it there created for us? I feel these technologies will change the way people live by making the shopping experience more of an experience and less of just a purchase and going home. So that will mean that when a customer goes into the store, they're able to experience all kinds of emotions and all kinds of you know, um, technologies in a short space of time, but then that will make the experience a, a memorable one that keeps them coming back. And that's the end of our show. For more business news, if you would simply like to view this episode again, visit MTV online. That's mtv.com.pg forward slash business. Until next week, have a pleasant evening. I'm Leanne Durari and this is Business PNG.